Starting at the bottom of Nam Gimel Amit Beis, right out to the Mishnah. So it goes back to the halacha that it said in the Mishnah, the Seder of the Aveda, the Kain Gadol shechted the par, and then the blood was given to a, another Kain to keep on mixing it until it'll be ready to do the Zerike with it, because in between he has to go do the Aveda of the Ketairis. So it said in the Mishnah, where is it placed? On the Reva da Revi on the fourth tile inside the Heichel. So the Gemara now asks on that. What doesn't it say? That nobody is allowed to be inside the oil Mayid when the Kayim brings the Ketairis. And here it says that there's someone that's going to be there with the blood, mixing the blood at the fourth tile inside the Heichel while the Kayim is going to do the Ketairis. So this is the halacha that the Gemara is going to focus on. For much of the Gemara we're going to learn today about this thing that no one's allowed to be inside the Heichel when the Aved is done. Um, Rav Yehuda, so Rav Yehuda answers, Tani, the way you have to learn and understand the Mishnah is, Shel Heichel. Shel Heichel means not inside the Heichel, not the fourth tile going inside the Heichel, but the fourth tile walking out of the Heichel. When you walk out of the Heichel, you count four tiles, and there, in the Azara, outside the Heichel, that's the place <coughs> where he was mixing the blood. That's the Pshat. Taner Abanon, so now the Gemara focuses on this halacha. Learn from Nebraise. B'chol Adam lo yiyeh b'yom Nobody is allowed to be inside the Heichal and the Oil Mayid when the Kain Gadol brings the Ketairis and does the Aveda there. Even the other Aveda says, we'll see here. Now, Yachal, I would think, that means that no one should even be in any of the Azara either when the Kain Gadol does his Aveda. Talmud, like Master the Pasik says, Ba'oil Mayid. You're not allowed to be inside the Oil Mayid in the Heichal. But in the Azara, you're allowed to be. Ainly, Allah, Ba'oil Mayid, Shabbat Midbar. So this expression of Oil Mayid is used regarding the oil in the Midbar. When the Yidin were at the Mishkan in the Midbar. Shiloh, Beis Elamim, but the Mishkan when it was in Shiloh, and then the Beis Amikdash, and the Heichel of the Beis Amikdash, Minayin. How do I know that it applies there as well? Talmud Laima, the Pasuk says, Bakaydash. That you shouldn't be, the Lashon over there is, Bevoye Lechaper Bakaydash. That when he goes inside the holy place, he shouldn't be there inside Kaydash, which refers even to the Beis Amikdash. So I would think that this Pasuk is only talking about at the time of the Ketairis. As the Gemara is going to say in a moment why I would think that. But I would think it's only the Ketairis. And then it was the bloods that were sprayed in the, inside the Heichal. Ayim Kippur. Inside the Kedusha Kedoshim. And inside the Heichal. How do I know that then as well you shouldn't be inside? When he comes inside to do the Kapara, which refers also to the blood, you're not allowed to be there either. So I only know that you shouldn't be there when the Kayan enters and while he's doing the Aveda. How about if he finished the Aveda and he's on his way out already? <laughs> How do I know that even on his way out, he's still not allowed to go in? Until the Kayan God comes out, you're not allowed to be there. Then the, this Braise continues, the, this is the continuation of the Pasik. It says, he brings a kapara for him from himself, for his household, for all Yidin. So from this, the Seder of this Pasuk we learn out, Kaparasai kaidemus l'chaparas beisai. His own kapara comes before the kapara of his house. Kaparas beisai kaidemus l'chaparas echa v'kainim. Then the kapara of his house comes before the kapara of his brothers, the kainim, as, as we saw before. The, first he says vidi for himself and his wife, then he says vidi for the kainim. And the kapara of, his, of the kainim is kaidemes, the kapara is echav kainim, kaidemes, the kapara is called kal Yisrael. Comes before the kapara of Yidin, the vidu that he says for all of kal Yisrael comes last. This is the, the b'raisa about this halacha, about not being inside the heichal when the kain does the aveda. So the Gemara is going to focus on one, a few things over here in this b'raisa. So, oh mamar, what did it say here? Ainli ela b'sha I would think that maybe this is only when he's doing the kataris. So the Gemara asks, my mashma, why would I think it's only the Ketairis? So it doesn't say anything about the Ketairis here. It says you shouldn't be inside. When bevoye lechaper bakaydish, lechaper, why is that the Ketairis? Amarav v'chen amarav Yitzchak barav dimi v'chen amarav balazar. Because on makra, the pasuk concludes v'chipe bade v'ad beisay v'ad kol kol kal Yisrael that the kain is going inside to bring a kapara for himself, for his household, and for all of Yidden. Eizel kapara sheshava loy lebeisay leecha v'kainim. Which Aveda Ayim Kippur is a kapara for himself and for everybody, even for the Kainim and for all the Chol Kal Yisrael and for all Yidin. Have Aime Zak 
This refers only to the Ketaris. There were the other, there was the Par and then the Sawyer. The Par was the Kapara only for the Kayan and his brothers and the Kayan. And the Sawyer was a Kapara for all of Yidin, so it wasn't for everybody. The Ketaris is the Aveda that's a Kapara for everybody. That's why I would think that it only refers to Ketaris. So the Gemara clarifies right away, a Ketaris Mechaperes? The Ketaris is considered to be a Kapara or the Bachas Gaitis in the Gemara. Ketaris mi Mechapara? Where do we see that the Ketairis is considered? What is it Mechaper for? We know that the Zrika of the Dam, of the Karbonis, is a Kapara. But why is the Ketairis considered to be a Kapara? So the Gemara answers, yeah, in, the Ketairis is a Kapara. The Atani Rab Chananya said, Lamadnu le Ketairis she Mechaperes. We learned that Ketairis is a Kapara. Shenema, the Pasik says, Vayitn is a Ketairis, Vayachaper alam. This is after the story of Kairach, and there was a Magaif, and they were even dying. So Meshur Rabbeinu, or Arna Kain actually came and with the Ketairis, and it was a Kapara, and the Magaif is stopped. The Tana Debe Rabbi Shmuel, Alma, Ketairis Mechaperes. From where, what, what exactly is the Ketairis Mechaper for? Allah Shnhara. The Ketairis is Mechaper, Allah Shnhara, which was what it was then, by the story there with Kairach, that Yidin uh, was saying, Lashon Hara and Meishar, Rashi brings the Pasuk here, and they, they accused Meishar Rabbeinu, saying, Atem Amitem Esam Hashem, that the whole story that happened with Kairach, that they got swallowed in the ground, you, Meishar Rabbeinu, caused all of this. So they, it's, it's Lashon Hara. So the Ketairis comes to be Mechaper on Lashon Hara. And regarding this we say, Yavai Davish Bechashoi, the Ketairis, which is done quietly in the Beis Mikdash, in the Kedusha Kedoshim, on Yom Kippur, when no one is there, it's done quietly, it's, a, it's an Aveda, which is Bachashai, the Yechaper al Maisa Chashai. And it should be Mechaper al Lashon Hara, which is also usually or very often said quietly. That's the Kapara of the Ketairis, which is a Kapara for everybody equally. That was the Havamina, why I would have thought that it's only for the Ketairis, and I have to have the Pasuk that says, especially again, it says, um, Bevoye, what the Gemara Dashan before, Bevoye, Lechaper, that even for all the Kaparas, all the Avedis that are done in Yom Kippur inside the base of Mikdash, <laughs> you're not allowed to be there, Bishas Mais, everyone else to go out. Tanan Asam, we learned in a Mishnah. This is a Mishnah in Mesech the Kalim. The Mishnah in Mesech the Kalim discusses the different levels of Kedusha that there are. There's Esa Kedusha, there are 10 Kedusha, starting from Eretz Yisrael, and then the Harabais, even before the Harabais, there's different levels, Yerushalayim and so on. And there it discusses the Kedusha that there is between the Mizbeach and the Ulam. And it says there as follows, Parshin, mi beinu Ulam v'la Mizbeach. Not only do you have to go out of the Heichal while the Kayin does the Aveda, but also you have to go away from between the Ulam and the Mizbeach b'shas HaKtara. At the time when the Kayin Gadol brings the Ketairis. So this is another halacha, as we'll see soon. The Gemara Namad Beis is going to tell us that this is actually a gzayda midrabanan. Minatayda, you only know how to be inside, but kaidish. But midrabanan, they were geyza, that you shouldn't come to look inside or to go inside. So even in that area, between the Mizbeach and the Ulam, you also know how to be there by the time of the Akhtara. Amr Abelazar, Sir Abelazar explains in this Mishnah, Loishanu el bishas Akhtara de Heichal. This refers... <laughs> to the Ketairas that's brought inside the Heichel. So then, you're not allowed to be there between the Ulam and the Mizbeach. But at the time when the Kain God brings the Ketairas inside into the Ketairas HaKadoshim, Meheichel Parshi, you have to go out of the Heichel, but me ben Ulam and the Mizbeach loy Parshi. You don't have to go away from between the Ulam and the Mizbeach. So Rashi says, because the Kain God is going all the way inside, so then, then you're already far, you're already outside, so you don't have to go further away. If it's in the Heichel, so then you might want to look inside and see, or you, want to, you might end up walking inside because you can see what's going on. But if the Kain God was all the way in the Kaidusha Kedoshim, so then you don't have to go away from between the Ulam and the Mizbeach. Mosav Ravada Barave, so Ravada Barave asked on this, Vamirullah Kedi, others say Kedi. Sometimes Kedi, it says that it's also a name of a certain Chacham, and the word says Kedi means no one. In other words, this was a question, but there was, there was no name to the person that asked this question. So the question was asked from a Braisa. It says as follows, Rabbi Yaisi Yaime. Rabbi Yaisi said, Kishem sheposhem ibeinu ulam v'lam izbeyach b'shas haktara. Just like you have to go away from that area, even between the ulam and the mizbeyach, at the time when the ketairis is brought. And right now the Gemara understands that it's referring to the ketairis inside the, the ketairis HaKedoshim. So you have to go away from between the ulam and the mizbeyach. Kach Parshin, so too you have to go away from that area, Bishas, Matan, Par, Koyen, Mashiach, a carbon. This is not even Yom Kippur here. 
is that Rabbi Yaisi is telling you that there's a there's a carbon that the, the, here it mentions three different carbonis, which the blood of these carbonis are sprayed inside the heichal. One of them is the par coin of Mashiach, uh, par coin Mashiach. That is, that's a coin gadol that uh, was over on a kares, so he has to bring a special carbon for himself, and the the blood of that carbon is inside the heichal. Another one is par helum davish al tzibur, when you had a Sanhedrin. That paskin that was matter is a kares for the entire tzibur, so you have to bring a carbon for that. And the third one is sira avedis kechavim, a soy which is brought if Yidin served avedis zara, so you also a carbon is brought. And indeed, these are the three carbonas that the blood is sprayed inside. Like I said, not on Yom Kippur. Bchalal, Gemara Slugan is tell us tell us the source from where we know that at, 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 when these avedis are done, you also have to leave. You have to leave the heichal. So during these avedis, you also have to leave that area. You have, so just like you have to go away between the Ulam and the Mizbech at the time of the Ketayda, so too these three Karbanas you have to leave from there. Now the Braisa continues and says, yesh, But what is a certain Maila, a certain advantage, that's more that there's a distinction between the Heichal and the place between the Ulam and the Mizbech. In other words, the Braisa now is going to tell us that this halacha that you have to leave, from the area, while the Aveda is done there, there's a certain mile, there's a more of a requirement to leave the Heichal more than between the Ulam and the Mizbeach. What's the difference? Ella, the difference is as follows. Shebe Heichal, inside the Heichal, Persian, you have to leave. Bein Bishas Akhtare, or Bein Shaloi Bishas Akhtare. Whether at the time when the Ketaris is brought, and even at the time when there's no Ketaris being brought, which means, the way the Gemara understands right now, what this means is, even when there's no Ketaris, but when there's the blood being sprayed inside the Heichal, even the Aved of the Dam, the Matan Domim, as Rashi says, you also have to leave. But between the Ulam and the Mizbeach, that, over there, you only have to leave that area at the time when the Ketaris is being brought. So now the way the Gemara understands this, Braisa is, that when it talks about kaktara, ketaydas, it's talking about the ketaydas and the kaydash akadashim. So what does this mean? If so, we see from here, bishas akhtara miya parshi. At the time when the ketaydas is being brought, you do have to leave, you have to separate, not only from the heichal, but also from between the ulam and the mizbeach. My love, don't you think the pshat here is, bishas akhtara de lufnay lufnim? That when you bring the ketaydas inside the kaydash akadashim, you have to leave, not only from the heichal, but also from the, between the ulam and the mizbeach. Which is the question on what Rabbi Laza said. Rabbi Laza said that you only have to leave from that area between the Ulam and the Mizbeach when the Ketaris is brought in the Heichal, not when the Ketaris is brought inside the Kedesh HaKadoshim. So the Gemara answers, Lloyd, that's not the Pshat and the Braisa. When it says Bishah Saktare, that you have to leave between the Ulam and the Mizbeach when the Ketaris is brought, it means the Bishah Saktare, the Heichal. When the, the, the Ketaris is brought inside the Heichal, that's when you have to leave. Not when it's brought in the Kedesh HaKadoshim. The Ketaris that's brought in the Kedesh HaKadoshim so then, you only have to leave the Heichel. The, you don't have to leave between the Ulam and the Mizbeach. So the Gemara asks, okay, but if that's the Pshat, then there's something that's missing here in the Braise. Yehachi, if so, Homa Maila, the Braise is asking a question. What's the difference between this Halacha of leaving the Heichel and leaving between the Ulam and the Mizbeach? So the Braise said the difference is during the Aved of the blood, when you spray the blood. When you spray the blood, you have to leave the Eichel, but you don't have to leave between the Olam and the Mizbeach. But the Sulai, there's no other Maila. But according to what you're saying now, according to Rabbi Laza's opinion, there's another difference. There's another, another advantage, which is the Ilum Eichel, Parshi, Bein Bishah Saktara Di Dei, Bein Bishah Saktara Di Lufnai Velufnim. Inside the Heichel, you're going to have to leave when the Ketaris is being done there, and when the Ketaris is being brought inside the Ketaris HaKadoshim. But between the Ulam and the Mizbeach, you only have to leave when the Ketaris is being brought, Shasaktara the Heichel, only when the Ketaris is being brought inside the Heichel, not when the Ketaris is brought inside the Ketaris HaKadoshim. So, so there's something missing here in the Braise. In other words, the way the Gemara understood the Braise until now is, that the Braise is talking about leaving the area when the Ketaris is brought in the Kedesh HaKedoshim, versus leaving when the blood is being sprayed inside. But why doesn't the Braise mention the difference between the Ketaris that's brought in the Kedesh HaKedoshim and the Ketaris that's brought inside the Heichel? 
So the Gemara answers, no, that's not, you, you, maybe the Braise is saying this. Hakatani, doesn't it say in the Braise, Elo, Shebeheichal Pershin, Bein Bishas Aktore, Bein Shaloi Bishas Aktore. Inside the Heichal, you have to leave the Heichal, whether it's the time of the Aktore inside the Heichal, whether it's not the time of the Aktor in the Heichal. So the Gemara, Rashi explains it, what the Gemara is saying now is, Bishas Aktore means when the Aktore is, when the Aktore is brought inside the Heichal, Shaloi Bishas Aktore means, even when there's no Aktore is brought in the Heichal, but the Aktore is brought in the Kodesh HaKadoshim, you have to leave. Only Beina Olam Olam is Beyach. Then the Braise said that between the Ulam and the Mizbeach, Ein Persian Elo Bishas Aktore, you only leave when the Aktore is brought in the Heichal. Not when the Ketiris is brought inside the Kedesh HaKadoshim. So that's exactly what the Brais is saying. According to the way the Gemara is interpreting it now, this is the Brais is saying exactly what Rabbi Laza had said. When the Ketiris is brought in the Kedesh HaKadoshim, you have to leave the Heichel. When the Ketiris is brought in the Kedesh HaKadoshim, you don't have to leave between the Olam and the Mizbeach. But the Gemara asks, but for Ha'ike, Ha'maila, but there's another difference between the Heichel. And between the Olam and the Mizbeach, the Ilu Meheichal, Parshi, Bein Bekdusha Didei, Bein Bekdusha De Lefnai Velefnim. That by the Heichal, you have to leave by the Kedusha. Rashi says, this Lashon of Kedusha, the Gemara says now, is not talking about the Ketairas, it's talking about the Aveda of, the, of spraying the blood there. So you have to leave the Heichal, whether the Aveda of the blood being sprayed inside the Heichal is being done, Bein Bekdusha De Lefnai Velefnim, or whether the blood is being brought on Yom Kippur inside the Kedush HaKadoshim. V'ilu mi bein olam v'lam mizbeach, but the, 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 this requirement to leave between the olam of the, and the mizbeach, le parsha el bekdusha de echel. You only have to leave when the blood is being sprayed inside the echel, not when it's being sprayed inside the kodesh hakadoshim. So the brayse is only explaining the difference between the hechel and between the olam and the mizbeach regarding the ketores. Why doesn't the brayse mention that there's also a difference regarding the blood that's brought there? Marav is sort of answer. That's part of what the brayse means. Shem prisha achasi. This prisha, this this requirement to separate regarding the ketores, and then to separate regarding the blood, it's the same Indian. The brayse the brayse says it regarding the ketores, but we understand from this that the same applies to the <coughs> to the blood that's brought inside the kodesh uh, kadashim or inside the heichal. The same thing. There's no difference. So now the gemara says, Oma Mar, what did we say in the brayse? That this whole halacha that you have to separate, that you have to go out. It's not only on yom kippur. It's any of the blood that's sprayed inside the Heichel, when that's done, anybody has to leave. So, Kach Pesha Bishas Matan Pak Koi Mashiach, Par Helm Dovashel Tzibur, Sira Vedis Kechavim, these three Karbanas that are sprayed inside. In Allah, from where do we know this? The Pasik Vachal Adam La Yeh Bayal Mait says in Yom Kippur, Amarav Pedos, Asya, Kapara, Kapara, Miyama Kippurim. It's Xayda Shavet, that by these Karbanas it says the term Kapara, and they are brought inside, just like the. Uh, the, the par and the sari Yom Kippur that's brought inside. So we learn how to say the Shave from the Aveda and Yom Kippur. Amar Avacha Barave, Avacha Barave says that we can learn out from this whole Indian, Shema no. from here we see, Mailois Doi Raisa, the different levels that it says in the Mishnah, and as I mentioned, this is in the Mishnah, Mesech Kalim. So there it mentions all the different Mailas, all the different levels of Kedusha. Rashi quotes it over here, if you take a look in the Rashi of Mailas, so Rashi says that Harabayis is holier than Yerushalayim, and then there's different levels. In Yerushalayim, there's the Chayel, there's the Harabayis, there's Ezra's Noshim, then there's Ezra's Yisrael, there's Ezra's Kayanim, different, different sections in the Azara, and each place has more of the Kedusha, and then there's between the Olam and the Mizbeach, then there's the Heichal, and so on. These are all different levels of Kedusha that there is in Yerushalayim and in the Beis HaMikdash. So the Gemara says... All of these levels of Kedusha the Mishnah mentions there, it's Medairaisa. What does it mean? It's, it's Medairaisa. Vahachi Gemiri Luhu. It's a Halacha Lemaisha Misinai. Meaning it's not just levels of Kedusha that the Chachamim instituted for whatever purpose, but it's a, it's a Halacha Lemaisha Misinai that you have all these levels. How do we know? Where do we see it from what we just learned? If you're going to say that all these different levels of Kedusha are just Midra but Minat Taita, it's all the one, the, for example, the Azara, the Beis HaMikdash, is all one level of Kedusha. Why are we saying that when you have to leave, when you have to separate from the area, because the Kayan is doing the Aved inside, so you only have to leave from where? Between the Ulam and the Mizbeach. Why not? And, and the, the reason is because Dilma Mikri Va'ayli. Because if you're going to stay in that area, it could happen that, you, you, that you're close enough and you might end up going inside. 
Mikula Azara Nami Nifrishu, this should apply to the entire Azara. If we're going to say that Minat Taira, the entire Azara, has the same status of Kedusha, so if you have to leave from that area, shouldn't you be required to leave from the entire Azara? Dilma Mikra If you're going to be there, you might uh, end up going inside. Elamai. So the fact that we only require you to leave specifically between the Ulam and the Mizbeach is because between the Ulam and the Mizbeach is, has another level of Kedusha. It's like a separate area. And therefore they require to leave only from there. So the Gemara answers, no. It's not, not necessarily Zerariah. Bein ulam v'la mizbeach, it's between the ulam and the mizbeach. Kivin du mifsik midi, there's nothing separating between you and the entrance inside, and the, the Beis HaMikdash. <coughs> so therefore, le minkere milse, is you don't have anything to remind you not to go inside. Azare, but if you're in the rest of the azare, kivin de ike mizbeach achis in the mafsik, because you have the mizbeach that's separating, so minkere milse, that uh, there's a remind the person there's something there that separates and he won't go inside. Therefore, you don't have to necessarily, it could be all these levels of Kedusha that the Mishnah speaks about is not, there's no Allah Allah Sina, it's not Menat but nevertheless, you don't go inside. You'll remember not to go inside. Another thing Rava tries to prove from here, Omar Rava, Shmami no, from this Allah, that it says that when the Kayan does the Aved inside, you also shouldn't be between the Ulam and the Mizbech either. From here you see, Kedusha's Ulam, the Heichal, Chodem Milsihi. The Kedusha of the Ulam and the Heichal is the same Kedusha. The Heichal is really the place where the, all the Kalim were, where the Aveda was done. The, the Ulam was just like this room, this, this like foyer, or the room in front of the Heichal. So th- from here we could learn that the Ulam and the Heichal is considered to be like one big area. The same level of Kedusha. Why? If you're going to say that the Ulam is a different level of Kedusha, it's separate than the Heichal itself. So if so, Ulam Gufei Gzeret. So it comes out that really when the Pasuk says, V'chaladam lo yeh ba'el mayed, it's only referring to the Heichel. I mean, I tell you, you're only not allowed to be inside the Heichel. The fact that you're not allowed to be in the Ulam when the Kayan does the Avedah, that's just a Gzeret, because you might come to go into, in, inside the Heichel. <laughs> so if that itself is a Gzeret, if the Ulam is considered to be a lower level of Kedush, and it's only a Gzeret, so if so, V'neik and V'nig's a Gzeret a Gzeret? Are we making a gzeda on top of another gzeda to say that you also shouldn't be between the ulam and the mizbeach? So therefore we see that we must say that the ulam is already part of the heichel. That's not a gzeda. So the Gemara doesn't accept this raya of Ravi either. Loi, it's not true. Ulam, uvein ulam la mizbeach, chad kedushi. Really it's the other way around. The ulam is not the same kedusha of the heichel. It's the ulam and between the ulam and the mizbeach that are all one kedusha. Heichel v'ulam, but the Heichel and the Ulam shtei kedushas. Those are two completely different kedushas. So it's, it's not exeter or exeter because the Ulam and between the Ulam and the Mizbech is one thing. And therefore you're not allowed to be there when the Kayan does the Aved inside. Okay, the Mara goes now back to the Mishnah. What's the next thing it said in the Mishnah? B'chol yayim, o'ya chayseh, b'chol kesef. Every day when he would shovel out the coals for the Ketayres, he would use a silver, a silver shovel or a silver pan. But today he used the gold. My time, what's the reason every day I used it from silver? Because the Torah is very particular with the money of Yidin, and because this is being used with fire, with coals, it's going to ruin the gold. It's not, so therefore you use the from silver. Even though usually in the base of Mikdash it says, Aniyas b'makam ashir, everything was done rich and with gold. But nevertheless over here, this is something that uh, gets ruined through the fire. So therefore over here, the Torah is something that gets ruined. You don't say, Aniyas b'makam ashir, it's because... It's used in such a kind of way. Then it says in the Mishnah, Of today, the Kayin kind didn't have to come with two pans. He only had one pan, and it was a gold, and that's the same one that he used to bring it inside. By time, why only one? Because we don't, because the weakness, the Kayin Gadol, he's, he's fasting and he has to do all the Aveda, so we're trying to minimize his, his work. So it said in the mission every day. So the, the pan that he shoveled with was had the size of four cabin. And then the one that he used to bring inside, what size was it? It was three cabin. That was one opinion of the Mishnah. Another opinion of the Mishnah was that the one that he shoveled with was, I think it said, from a saw, which is six cabin. And then the one that he brought it in with was from three cabin. So two, two opinions here. So Tane and Abraiz, we learned as follows. So what happened? He shoveled with a bigger shovel. And then he poured it over from the bigger shovel into a smaller gold shovel. <laughs> so some of it is going to spread out. 
It's going to spread out onto the floor. So the spazru loy kav gecholim. So that one extra kav, according to this opinion that says that you shoveled with four, that was large enough to hold four kav, and then you poured it into another shovel that only could hold three. So one kav spread out on the floor. Mechabdan lame. You should sweep it, and you sweep it into the ama. According to Rashi, mechabdan lame means there was a stream of water that was running through the the, the, the azara. So in order for the kain not to get burnt from these gecholim that are on the ground, you have to sweep it up and put it into the uh, into that stream. That's, but there's other Rishayim that disagree with Rashi because they say you're not allowed to take the coals and, and throw it into the water. You're not allowed to extinguish any coals from the Mizbeach, even when it's not on the Mizbeach. So other Rishayim learn, Amma means there was a place. There was like this place of an Amma, size of an Amma, in the side of the Mizbeach, that all the extra coals that fell down, they would sweep it into that area. It was called an Amma because of that area. Tani Chade, and one Braise we learned, Kav, that what spilled over, there was extra Kav. Vetani Yidach, and another Braise we learned, Kabayim. There were two Kav that were extra that spilled over. So the Gemara now explains, Vishloim, Hachtotani Kav, this Braise that says it was one extra Kav, Rabbanon, that's the opinion of the Rabbanon, that you shoveled with a shovel that had three, that had four kav, and you were spilling it over into a shovel that had three kav, so there was one extra. Elach, the Tani Kavayim, the one that says that there were two kav that were extra, Mani, wh- whose opinion is this? Lei Rabbanon, v'lei Rabbi It's not the Rabbanon that say that there was only one extra, and it's not Rabbi Yaisi, because Rabbi Yaisi said that you took with a sa'a, which is six kav, and you poured it into a shovel that had three kav, so there should be three kav that are extra, not two. It's another opinion, it's a third opinion. He would shovel with a shovel of four kav, and then he would use the shovel that was two kav to bring it inside the, into the heichel. So there were two kav that were extra that spilled over. It's one answer. Ravashi Omar, Ravashi answers, this b'raisa that says that there were two kav extra and not three, it's going even according to Rabbi Yaisi. And Vachi Kama, this is how you have to understand the Mishnah. He would shovel with a shovel that had a saw in the measurements that they had in the midbar, which is six six kav that they had in the midbar. But then And he would pour it into another shovel, and that shovel was measured with the kavin of, Yudush, of, of, of that, that they changed, that they had in Yudushalayim. And Rashi says they added a sixth. To the measurements of the kav. So if it was six kavin in the in the measurements that they had in the midbar, the way they measured it in Yerushalayim was really only five kav, because the kavin, the size of the kavin was larger. So it was only five kav. So basically there was a shovel of five kav that they poured it into a, the shovel that was three kav, and they brought it into the base of English. So therefore there was only two extra that spilled over, and that was the b'raisa kabayim. The next thing it said in the Mishnah was, Every day this shovel they used was a heavy, heavy material, thick, heavy material. And today it was made light. Again, the reason is for the Kayan Godel, not to, not to have to work too hard. Tanen Abdaisar explains, Every day the, the, the walls of this, the, the material was made very thick. Today it was soft and thin. Every day the handle was a short handle that you had to hold and balance in your hand. And today it had a longer handle that you were able to also lean it on your, on your elbow and it wasn't so hard to hold. So you shouldn't have to balance and hold a handle in his hand, but his elbow should be able to help him. Tana and Abraisu, we learned another interesting thing. Every day, this pan that they were holding and brought it inside did not have a niyashtik. Very interesting word. What does this niyashtik mean? As she says, niyashtik means a ring. There was a ring that was attached to the tip of the handle that would make noise when you walked inside. As she says, like it says by the Kayin Gadol, Nishma Kaila so every day, the pan that they held did not have this ring that would make noise. But on, on Yom Kippur, it had this ring that made noise. And uh, the reason is, that the Rebbe brings this in a sikh, actually. The Rebbe says that every day, the Kohen Gadol was wearing the big day kohona, the big day zav, and he had the, yeah, the yeah, me'il yeah. that had the bells. But today, he was wearing the big day lavon, so it didn't make any noise. So what made the noise? The pan itself had this ring on it. That's Rashi's pshat. Taisus has a different pshat. If you look here in Taisus, he brings it from the Yerushalmi. He says, there's a few pshatim in the Yerushalmi. The pshat of Taisus is that it refers actually to a certain leather cover that they put on top of the handle 
of the pan. And the reason is, huh? Yeah, the reason is you shouldn't get burnt because it's made from gold and you have the fire that's inside of it, you're going to get burnt. What's the difference from every day? Every day he took the kataras and went straight in. But today, as we learned before, he first has to place it down on the, in the Azara. There was a place that he had to put it down and then he had to go bring another pan. So it sat there for a certain period of time. So it heated up and it got very hot. So he couldn't pick it up. So he had to put this leather cover to be able to hold it in his hands. And then Taisus brings from the Yerushalmi, if you're putting a leather cover, isn't that a chatzitza? You're not even holding the keli. So the Yerushalmi says you have to screw or nail the, the leather together with the pan so it should become part of the pan so it shouldn't be considered to be a chatzitza. That's what this lush in the yashtik is referring to, this cover. Interesting. I don't know what the, the root of this word of niyashtik means. Kopana, but the, 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 that's the tupshat in Rashi and Taisus. Either a sort of a noisemaker or a cover. The Hayyim, back into the Lashon of the Gemara, the Hayyim, Hayyol on Yashtik, had this uh, ring on it, or this cover on it. Divrei Ben Azgan, this is the Shitta of Ben Azgan. This is, uh, but the Rambam does not quote this La Alokhe, because this is only the opinion of Ben Azgan. It wasn't brought in the Mishnah, Bechlal. For the Rambam doesn't pass in this way. Okay, stop over here.